traditional animator a long time ago and um, loved animation to always be my first love uh, but the industry was getting smaller and smaller and more people were um, doing it on the computer learning the computer so I decided to take a big leap and I um, did an MA in Bournemouth um, and uh, paid for myself and sort of took myself out of work and life changed from there on really um, and it was that was 1994 uh, and it was just at the sort of start of the industry in the UK um, and I found myself uh, knocking on a few company doors, went to Cinesite, they had a bar <laughs> uh, and I thought oh, I really like this company, I'm going to go for it and I've been there ever since which is crazy but um, my, my life has changed along with the industry really so I moved up through doing um, 3D, 2D then into sort of um, sequence supervision and then VFX supervision. So. You know, nobody's ever asked me that before. That's, yeah, what are the advantages? Um, um, I think the advantages probably are to do with um, an ease of communication. Um, I find it very easy to talk to people and um, I think I have an enthusiasm for the job and so I find it quite easy to, um, I hope I find it easy to get the best out of people. Um, and so I'm very collaborative. Uh, perhaps that's a female trait, I don't know. Um, the disadvantages, uh, I don't know, the disadvantages are probably a little bit more um, secretive because I think I don't always know what my disadvantages are. I think there's always, you know, the truth is there is a, always a boys network. Um, and I think sometimes I'm probably excluded from it. Um, so I'm sure there have been times where I I've, I've, haven't been chosen because people are not sure about me or... Um, they're not sure whether uh, they'll they'll mix well with me, or maybe they just think you know she's a girl. Maybe she's not you know technical enough. Um, there's lots of things out there, and, but I I've never really um, faced it uh, in a face to face kind of way. I've, I've I've always kind of wondered whether that's something to do with uh, why I get a job or not. So I don't know. Um, I've just been me. I can't do it any other way. <laughs> huge changes over the last um, 17 years. Advances in um, tracking, for example, uh, sounds simple really, but you know, back in the day it took a long time to, to track something. You wouldn't always get the right camera information, everything had to be hand-tracked, and I, you know, I know that's still a problem now, but you know, the, the tracking software that's out there, you can resolve lenses, work out 3D space um, in a much uh, more time-efficient way, at least. Uh, so that's a big change. Um, the other thing that I do a lot of now is photogrammetry work, um, going out, shooting environments and recreating the environments digitally. So we no longer rely on uh, soups to go out there and um, shoot helicopter plates and then track something into that plate. Now we go out and we tile the whole area, uh, you know, go out with multiple lenses and then you know, use photogrammetry software to build environments and, and um, it gives directors so much more freedom to fly cameras through and around. Uh, and you know the, the answer is that it makes our life easier as well because we don't have to do you know motion control moves or um, or again you know um, limit the shot by just tracking in a, a map painting. Um, and so that's come at the same time as m a lot of people are moving into um, shooting stuff in stereo. Uh, and so now we're able to say, okay, um, you know we won't need to do the, the old well, we can't do the old 2D way of cheating a map painting into the background. It has to have some um, depth to it because we'd have to do that in post anyway. So those two things are quite interesting, the, the advance of stereo and the use of photogrammetry. Um, that's been a lot of the work that I've done recently anyway. Uh, the things 
I really enjoy doing are travelling to different countries. Um, I uh, adore that and it's a real privilege to be taken by a film company and, and you know, I've travelled a long way around the world. Utah for John Carter, Morocco for Prince of Persia, um, Tomb Raider, I went to Iceland. Um, and you get to see a different side of the world and you're looked after very well. Um, and I always say I'm going to take my family there afterwards and I never do. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the next show, I, I, I'd love to travel with them, um, whatever that may be. Uh, but that's that's exciting. Um, and then the other thing that I really enjoy about my job is working with the other creatives um, because you meet the most extraordinary people who are passionate about what we do. Uh, but also, you know, I love meeting people who've got their special talents. Um, you know, some people just love this side of the industry, you know, incredibly small, detailed work. Um, and I love to hear about that. And I, I, I just want to collect it all. Um, my job now is... is um, as VFX well supervisor is I need to know a bit of everything um, and I, I no longer really get to specialise in certain things so I love meeting people who uh, have that speciality and are enthusiastic and want to talk about it. Oh wow. Uh, do you know what, I think it might be um, when I worked on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory uh, and I, I adore Tim Burton, uh, I've, I've always loved his films. And um, we were shooting in, uh, in Germany, I think, and um, we went out for dinner, and, uh, and he said, um, uh, I'm travelling home tomorrow, uh, when are you going back? And I went, oh, you know, the day after tomorrow, uh, I just had my daughter, so she was only six months old. Uh, and he said to me, oh, you know, you must, you must fly back tomorrow just left it there and then the following day I got a call from uh, Tim Burton saying would you like to fly home on my private jet? So I flew with Tim Burton and the neg for the film um, and he, he just did that out of kindness because he knew that I wanted to get back to my family so yeah Tim Burton is uh, a god in my world. Mm -hmm.